hand this morning and say amen. Amen. You may be seated, Pastor. Oh, that's right. If you have a birthday in the month of June, you would stand with us. We're going to sing happy birthday to you. still think it's Memorial Weekend, hadn't showed back up, so if they're not here next Sunday, we'll have to get the law looking for them, amen? And uh, uh, it's good to have Miss Nelda, Miss Brother Allen, Dale down here with their lovely daughter, Miss Lauren. Stand up, Lauren, stand up. I love this baby girl right here. She just graduated from Navarre High School, and uh, she's just sort of lost her mind after that. She's going to university, don't you say a word, son, she's going to University of Tennessee. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, but I tell you what, though, I tell you what, love this family, good to have you guys with us today, and the flowers today are furnished by Hampton and Gabrielle Tuck in recognition and celebration of their first wedding anniversary of Saturday, thank you, happy anniversary, there'll, there'll be crystals all these 30 minutes late, she'll be here shortly, uh, so anyway, you see them? Hampton's out of town working, but uh, tell them uh, happy anniversary, okay? And uh, let me see here. Wednesday, you can read that about the kids' choir and all the things that are going on uh, Wednesday night. And teens are doing something special. Is that right, Brother Johnny? All of you know about that, so please uh, pay attention to that. Let me see. Oh, and, and adults, we're still having services on Wednesday night in, in here, okay? Uh, we're doing that. He is the Holy Lord God Almighty. Uh, we're studying First Peter. And boy, it talks about so much in there about the holiness of God, that he is a holy God. And so we encourage you uh, to get back in church. If you're home watching today, uh, we hope, hope you'll worship with us today. Uh, sing along with us. Nobody can hear you, so just go ahead and sing at the top of your voice. And uh, enjoy the services with us today. Anything else? All right. How about let's have a word of prayer, then Brother John is going to come and praise you. Father, we come to you today, Lord, and just thank you for your mercy, your grace, Lord, your kindness. Lord, you're long-suffering. Lord, you know all about us. You still love us, and we thank you for that. And Father, we pray for those who may be here today with a heavy heart. That, Lord, things are they're in their life right now. They're facing decisions, and Lord, we know that we have some folks facing surgery the coming week and uh, other situations, physical health. And Father, we pray that your will will be done in their lives. We pray for spiritual, Lord. We pray for if those here today or those who are watching today that, uh, Lord, they've just gotten away from you. Father, you draw them back to you. And Bring them back in the house of God that we can worship together. Bless Brother Johnny and the praise team as they come. And Lord, we'll worship you with music in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We continue to worship. Ask them to stand with us.
God is good, amen? This next song we're going to sing is simply called, Lord, I Need You. And you know, it's very humbling sometimes to ask for help, right? It's, it's humbling. So the Bible teaches about, God teaches about coming to him with, in humility and asking for help. And say, God, I need you. I don't know about you, but I need him every single day. Every single day. I can't imagine not having the Lord by my side. And so this, this song is simply a plea. Say, God, I need you in this hour. Amen. So I want to sing this out. Let's sing it to the Lord this morning. Lord, I need you. Lord, I come and I confess by
Father, we come this morning to worship you and you alone. Lord, we come to worship your holy name this morning. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for the opportunity, for the freedom that we have in this country to come and gather and speak your name. We pray that you'll be lifted up and you'll be glorified this morning as we continue, Father, with the remainder of the service. Be with our pastor. Lord, use him to speak to our hearts, Father. We invite the Holy Spirit to this place this morning. Lord, if there's anyone this morning that's watching online or that's here physically this morning that does not know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that today will be the day of repentance and belief, Father, and salvation. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you so much. In Jesus' precious love, name, I pray. and singers. I love hearing y'all sing. I love hearing anybody sing who loves the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> you pray for us this morning. Been wrestling a little physical problem and appreciate your prayer. We're going to preach anyway. Amen. Have your Bibles go to Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, <coughs> pardon me, Mark chapter 2, now, if you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, today would be the day to do that, Amen. you said, why is that, preacher, because you're not promised tomorrow, Amen. you're not promised this afternoon, right. and God loves you, and Christ died for you. You say, but you don't know. I don't have to know. God knows. He knows all about us, and he still loves us, and I'm still amazed at that. Amen? Amen. Preaching on the subject this morning, this, we never saw it on this fashion. We never saw it on this fashion. <clears throat> now, Jesus is in Capernaum, which was his headquarters for his Galilean ministry there, and we find in that chapter that Jesus healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Now look at me. He must have loved Peter. That's all I'm going to say. He must have loved Peter a lot. Amen? I always get to understand how, how can you make Peter the first pope and he was married. I, anyway, that's another, that's another sermon for another day. But they were meeting in Simon Peter's uh, house at that time and because of the leopard's testimony in chapter 1, the crowds came and they witnessed what was going on, what the Lord was doing, and they left and they made that statement there in chapter 1. We never saw it on this fashion. We never saw it on this fashion. Now, this message is going to be very short. Don't start clapping. <laughs> but there's a great point here I want you to get, okay? My question this morning is why did they make that statement? Why did they make that statement when they said we never saw it on this fashion? On the outline, you can fill it in. First of all, it was the crowded church. They made it because it was the crowded church. I heard someone say the other day, a preacher friend of mine, he said, you know, Willie, we live in a day to day where people do anything to get people to church. Everything from sword swallowing to belly dancing, amen? And so don't get excited. We ain't doing either one of them. But, but it's true. It's true. It, it, it's not any a whole lot of commitment anymore to any church or ministry is who's got the best pony show going on in town. Well, I think we'll go over here this week. They had that two-headed man there last week, and I'll go over here and do this. Not, not commitment, not commitment. It, you, you can't build a church on people like that. You, you really can't. And uh, now, thank God you're here this morning, but uh, this church was very crowded, and it was crowded because of two reasons, at least two. A, on your line, it was crowded because of the Savior. It was crowded because of the Savior. Chapter 2 Verse 1 and 2, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he, I love that, it was noise that he was in the house. Uh, some years ago, the ball players would pick that little slur up and, hey, he's in the house, he's in the house. I, I'm glad that the Lord's in the house today. Amen. I'm glad he's in the house. He's in this house. Amen. And straightway, many were gathered together, in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much. Uh, as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. 
it was crowded because of the Savior. Uh, I was looking at some old songs last night, and uh, surely, uh, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place is, is one I like. But one I really like, I, I heard about five different versions of it last night. It's an old, old song, but it's still a great song. It's, he is here. He is here. It says, I sense an awesome moving of the Holy Spirit, and I see his countenance resting on your face. I know that there are angels hovering, hovering all around us, for the presence of the Lord is in this place. And of course, that he is here, hallelujah. He is here, amen. He is here, holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here, listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here, you can touch him, and you will never be the same. Amen. Are you listening to me? I'm talking to crowded because of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to know when you come in this place, if you're saved, you don't come in by yourself. Uh, my Bible teaches me when a person gets saved that the Holy Spirit of God takes up a boat in that person's life and he lives in that person's life. And so when I came in this morning, I came in with the Holy Spirit with me this morning. People will come to Jesus, but we have to tell them what a Savior has done for us to get their curiosity sometimes. I think you ought to take every opportunity to give a testimony for the Lord. Amen. Every opportunity. I mean, just even church. On Wednesday nights, I've been trying to pull some teeth and get one or two testimonies out and stuff. But hey, you ought to take every opportunity you have to witness for the Lord. You say, I'm not very good at it. You don't have to be good at it. You just have to be obedient. You have to be obedient. And uh, uh, take every opportunity to give a, a, a positive, uplifting testimony about your church, about your church. If you if you if you if you're a member of another church, brag on your church. Amen. By the way, if you're a member of another church and you're not out of town, I don't know what you're doing here today, but we're sure glad to have you. Amen. I told somebody asked me, said, You proselyte I said, I don't proselyte people. But we do plant grass, amen. <laughs> I'm just saying. He was crowded because of the Savior. He was also crowded because of the scriptures. Because of the scriptures. Jesus preached the word. Jesus preached the word. He didn't preach Reader's Digest. He didn't preach Dear Abby. He preached the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I wish I was stronger in faith. Get in the word of God. I wish I knew more. Get in the word of God. Let the word of God get in you. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 18. Put that up there, brother. <clears throat> it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church and is a savior of the body. Christ is head of the church. We must preach the word of God. And, 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 and so winners, that's something we don't hear a lot about anymore. Yeah. I, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because we all probably be embarrassed, but when's the last time you actually took the word of God, sat down with someone and led them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? If it's, it's probably been too long like it has for me. But I'm saying, I was thinking about, we, we call it the Romans Road. It's a little simple thing. It's, it's still in there. Uh, people say, well, I don't like it. It don't matter where you like it or not. It's in the Word of God. And, and for people who weren't real smart growing up as far as church, uh, it helped me. Uh, remember, I, I remember sitting down with a pastor, and he would read these verses and, and, and explain them to me like I would a little six-year-old boy or girl. And I'm just going to give them to you real quick. But Romans 3.10, as it's written, there is none righteous, no, not one. What does that mean? That means all of us are one heartbeat away from hell if it wasn't for the grace of God. There's nothing righteous. No, not one. Don't, don't go around acting like you got it all together. Amen? Brother Johnny Hunt, you say we're all about one mistake away from being stupid. And, and you know what? He's right. He's right. Romans 3.10. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned. How many? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. I have. I have. Put me at the headline. Romans 5.8. I love this. But God commended his love towards us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Did you know, did you know that Jesus Christ was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world? Judicially, he was dead in the mind of God before he ever created man. And that's what that verse is talking about. God commended his love. While we were yet sinners, while we were in our worst sins, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin. I'm talking to someone about that. I said, you know what a wage is? So you, get, you get paid. It's what you get paid. You do something, you get paid for it. Well, there's a payday for sin. R.G. Lee used to preach a message called payday someday. For the wage of sin is death, but 
The gift of God. I'm glad God's got a gift to us. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You say, how long are we going to live, preacher, till God dies? Amen. Romans 10, 9 through 13. Romans 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You see, you can have all the intellectual knowledge about God and die and go to hell being intellectual. It's not, it's not, a, it, it, it's not a, a head belief. It's a heart belief. It's a heart belief. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God raised from the dead, there shall be saved. And he explains it in verse 10 through 13. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, who said, believe on him, should not be ashamed. You, you, you ought, we ought not ever be ashamed of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the scripture said, who said, believe him, should not be ashamed. For there is no difference. That's what? There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all, unto all that call upon him. And in verse 13, man, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, that's not a, that's not a, I hope so. I, I witnessed to people like you have, and I said, man, do you know for sure if you died, you're going to, well, I'm sure I hope so. I said, but you don't have to hope so. You can know so. You can know so. If you're here this morning for the first time or the hundredth time, it doesn't make any difference. If you're not sure today, if you don't know for sure today, you'd go to heaven when you die. Get it settled today. Get it settled today. Amen. Jesus preached the word of God. We must get the scriptures to people. We must get the scriptures of the word of God to people. And number two, we see the concerned Christian, verse three and four. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which bore of the four. And when they could not come nigh to him for the press, those people always been getting in the way, hadn't they? Huh? Okay, you'll get that tomorrow. And not get to him nigh for the press, they uncovered the roof. Uh, man, y'all do me a favor. If you're trying to get somebody to Jesus, get them down now. We just spent $150,000 on that roof. That's, I'd prefer not cutting holes into it. That's what happened here. They cut a hole and let the man down in the hole in front of Jesus. They broken it up and let him down, let it down his bed where the sick of the palsy lay. Man, don't you know that was a sight? Huh? You've been in church and there, it's packed out. What's that noise up there? We got termite? No, what is it? I don't. Dear God, somebody cut a hole in the roof. There's a man on the bed. I mean, you, you say, do you believe this? I believe this morning. I believe you're sitting where you're sitting. Amen. Why do you believe it? Because of the word of God. They were dedicated. They didn't let some obstacle or uh, obstruction stand uh, in the need uh, of this man right here. What, 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 do the people, what do people need? They need the Savior. We, listen, we must get people to the Savior. Uh, it's not getting them to church that saves them. It's not getting them in the baptistry that saves them. It's not taking the Lord's Supper that saves them. It's getting people to Jesus. Now you said, do you think you ought to be baptized? Yes, at your saved. Should you take the Lord's Supper? Yes, after you're saved. I believe all those things are good. But I'm saying, sometimes sometime we get people religious and they think they're saved and they're not saved. They just got religion. All God's people say it. The rest of them say it. And them on the back row say it. Amen. In Psalm 107, uh, Psalm 107 and verse 12, if I can find it. Psalm 107 verse 12 there it is it says therefore he brought down their heart with, lamp, with labor they fell down and there were none to help and they cried unto the Lord in the trouble and he saved them out of their distresses but that little phrase there and there was none to help you know church one man two people can't make this church happen Johnny and I can work 24 hours a day and we'll never get what needs to be done. That's why God put you here. Uh, God didn't save you to set soak and sour. He saved you to serve. Amen? Amen. And, and some of you think, you know, I just show up and I done God a favor. I came for an hour this morning. And God's so proud of me. I'm glad you're here. God bless his faithfulness. But if this is your church, let's, get, let's start taking part of it. Amen? 
Let's start doing some things. I, thank God I've got about 25 men signed up. Uh, we're going to have a work day. It will, it will be probably a charity uh, after uh, uh, Father's Day. We're going to work and we'll have all the material in. We're getting some stuff. I won't go through all of it. But anyway, thank God for folks who are willing to work. Amen? Now, if you go over, you're not going to go there, but in the book of Acts, when they started the church in the day of Pentecost, the key words in the book of Acts is this, unity and one accord. Unity and one accord. Church, we don't, listen, we don't have to agree on everything, but we must have unity and we must be in one accord. So they were dedicated, but B, they were also determined. They were also determined. <clears throat> Mark chapter 2, verse 4. And when they'd come, uh, and when they could not come nigh unto the priest, uh, they uncovered the roof. I just read that to you. And they broke it up and let him down. They found a way to get this crippled man to Jesus. You know what, folks? There's a lot of crippled people in Fort Walton Beach. There's physical crippled people, and then there's people who are crippled uh, uh, spiritually. But there's a lot of people in our city. They need the Lord. They need the Lord. All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to look up here now. <clears throat> they were determined. I, I, I wrote, well, of course, one that came to my mind last night, first one I wrote there, was Brother Robert Messer. Man, some of you guys, and especially Scott, uh, son-in-law, they got him to, to the Word of God, under the Word of God, that he got saved, and, and went out and got people. I mean, I, 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 think, I think about Glenn and Cindy, uh, most of the time, Meemaw, she can't. Do get here any much by herself anymore. You guys uh, pick her up all the time. I think about Tom Alexander. I think about uh, Brother Joe Shelton. I think about uh, when we was having a Sunday night service. Our, our men from then at Jada was coming down. We'd have 10 or 15 uh, come in and study the Word of God with us. I'm saying, hey, you and I need to get busy getting people to the Savior. We need to be determined. We must be creative in our witness. Whether it be tracks or door knocking, I I told Reed the other day, we was riding around somewhere. Oh, I know what it was. Um, there was a wreck down here uh, where that little old service station is, one thing store. Bad wreck right there yesterday, so uh, I'm nosy. So uh, we did a U-turn, went down there and checked things out. And then we rode back, and we started riding through this neighborhood back over here on Gardner Street, Brother Umber, in that area over there. And I got to thinking. I, told, I said, you know how many times we've knocked doors over here? We've got, I, I know that's old-fashioned. I know that's old school. But I'm going to tell you something. We've got people in heaven because we went out and done that. Uh, uh, Carlisle and Cindy Birch would be a great example and, and others. But I'm saying, we just, wh whatever it is, we need to get. Now, I never forget, Brother Josh, the first time I went out to, to quote, hand out tracts, I'd been saved two days. I didn't know what it meant. But I know my pastor's son was doing it, and, and, and uh, he said it was right, so we did it. I said, what do you do? He said, take this little good news from modern men, whatever it was. I don't even know what it was now. And you give it to people, tell them God loves you. God's my witness looking. I walked up to the first fellow, and I stuck it about that far in his ear. I said, oh, you yeah, know God loves you. <clears throat> what did he say? <laughs> and, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I gave him ear problems or what, but and I didn't know. But you know what? I was out trying. Yeah. I was out trying. Amen? I'm just saying... Uh, I used to, when I was in Tennessee Temple, uh, I, I had a, a job, well, I, I passed the church, told you that last week, 45 miles away, but I had another job, we sold ices, snow cones, and had a, had a Christian guy, all he would work was Tennessee Temple students, and I'd drive, I'd pick, get myself up, Johnny from Chattanooga, and drive down to Dalton, Georgia, and that was my route down in there, and they had other people coming from Dalton, and I told them, don't run on my route, anyway, that's another story, but, uh, the only way that I really got a crowd was my mother-in-law could sew anything. And she made a clown outfit. And I, I've got a sweet wife that put that ugly thing on. And she put that makeup on, she put on, and we start ringing that bell, and she'd read a bell in that truck, and they'd see her. Man, they'd be coming out of the woodwork, the groves, and they just, they did gather around. There was a lot of days I would give free ices, small ices away if they'd set, the kids would sit and listen to a gospel message. We saw kids say, I'm just saying, hey, be great. Do what, do what, do what you want to do. Just, just get people to Jesus. Right. Number three on the outline. We see the change crippled. The change crippled. Verse five. 
when Jesus saw their faith, he said in the sick of the Paul, his son, thy sins be forgiven thee. A on outline, he was changed because of their faith. He was changed because of their faith. You said, wait a minute, preacher. <laughs> I thought he had to have faith. Well, he did. He did. But listen to me. They had faith enough in God to get that man to God. Are you listening to me? He, they had faith enough to get him. So winners must have faith in God. We must have faith in God. We must have faith in the word of God that when we testify to people, witness to people, we must, listen, their faith did not save this man, but their faith brought this man to Jesus. And, and listen, you, you and I don't have the power to save anybody, but we can bring people every day to Jesus if we just try, if we just try. Be on the outline. <clears throat> this man is paralyzed with a palsy of sin. <clears throat> and also, it was, a, it was a sin of indifference. It was a sin of prejudice. We won't go into all that, but uh, the soul winner is to be the stretcher barrier for those who are sick. Do you know that? Uh, we, 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 all, we, we all be riding around our spiritual vehicles every day picking up people and getting them to Jesus. Getting them to Jesus. <clears throat> Number four in the outline, we see the critical conscience. <clears throat> the critical conscience. <clears throat> Chapter, I mean, verse six. But there were certain other scribes sitting and reasoning in their hearts. Why this man thus speak blaspheme? Who can forgive sin but God only? Verse 8. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit uh, that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Why reason them in your heart? <clears throat> Let me go and read verse 9 and 10. Were there it be easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to the sick, arise and take up thy bed and walk? Verse 10, but that they may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sin. He said to the sick of the palsy. The critical conscience, people can criticize. You know, it doesn't take any brains to criticize people. It doesn't take any smarts to criticize another ministry or another pastor. God help you if you do that. Well, they did so and so. Well, God take care of them. It's not your business. It's not my business. I got all I can do is take care of Willie Pays and the rest of you. Amen. A, we see where he dealt with them. Dealt with them there on earth. Bitten on earth. He had power on earth to forgive us sins. <clears throat> they would not accept Jesus is God, so Jesus reminds them that he can forgive sin as well as heal physical, uh, physical because he is able to pay for it all. How, preacher? On the cross on this earth. That's what he died for. Jesus died for the lost. Jesus died for the lost. Didn't I see Miss Millie in here? Where's Millie? She back, okay. Miss Millie? I never have a doubt in my mind that I see Jesus at Tom's in heaven. I know he is. How do you know that? I know what the Word of God teaches. I know what the Word of God teaches. Do I think you ought to wait to the last moment? Uh-uh. <laughs> That's gambling with destiny. But I'm going to tell you what. Him that cometh me, I will in no wise cast out. Amen. The thief on the cross says, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. He didn't pray to Romans Road. He didn't join the church. He didn't get baptized. He didn't get take communion. He just said, Lord, be merciful for me, a sinner. And God saved him. And God still saves. And God still saves. So be on not and how he dealt with them. We read, just read that verse uh, 8 and 9. <clears throat> now, a, a question that would lead the people that Jesus was talking to to a conclusion that Jesus was God on foot if they, if they would let that happen. All faithful soul winners deal with critical consciences. You know that? People, people just get critical. They, they get offensive. We, we try to point them the truth, and if they reject him, then we must go forward, and we must... Don't... What I'm saying is, if you're out witnessing someone, and 
God forbid they would curse you, but if they do, you have no control over that. Just take up your bed and walk, amen? Just walk on. Let me give you number five. I'm going to draw it to a close. Their congregations claim. Their congregations claim, verse 11 and 12. And I say to them, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose and took up his bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. The change was immediately. The change was, you know, it reminds me of the guy that was at the pool of Bethesda. He'd been there for 38 years, a paraplegic. He said, I can't get in the water. Jesus come along and asked me a question. He said, sir, would you be made whole? I said this before, but the first time I read that, Brother John, I thought, Lord, that is the dumbest question you can ask anybody. The man's laying on a stinking pallet for 38 years. He's got this water out here. Once a year, the Lord sends an angel. They touch the water. The water's trouble. First one gets in the water, God heals him. And, he's, and he asked him, and he said, Sir, I don't have anybody to help me get in the water. I don't have anybody to help me get in the water. But I'm going to tell you, I, I learned something else about that situation. If that man at the pool of Bethesda had no desire to get in that water, there's not anything even Jesus Christ could do to help him. And you'll you'll run into some people. You'll run into some people. They're so bent that hey, don't don't tell me what I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to hear that religion. Uh, you know what the first person I witnessed to told me to do with it? Take my religion, go to hell with it. See, I'll bet that made your day. Oh, it really made my day. It was my mother. It's my mother. Thank God I led her to Christ two years before she died. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It, it, but don't miss it. He says, take up thy bed. Why did he make that statement? I wonder. Now, here's what I believe. I believe he was saying, hey, you need to do it because it's possible a relapse may happen. You may relapse into something. Now, hear me. I've known people with drug problems. I've known people with alcohol problems. And they come and they'll come at the altar and cry and weep and whatever. And I've dealt with them in a home. I've dealt with them at the altar. I've dealt with them in, in, in my office. And I said, what you need to do? I asked him, I said, do you have any booze at home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, you need to go pour it all out. You need to get rid of it. And so I see him a week later and ask him, did you do that? Just about all of it, preacher. What, what do you mean all of it? Well, I kept a little bit. I mean, I never know when I might have a relapse. I said, I guarantee you, as long as you keep it, you're going to have a relapse. As long as you got a needle and some cocaine, you're going to have a relapse. You're going to have a relapse. So if you want to be made whole, as the guy did at the pool of Bethesda, then you just got to turn it all over to the Lord. You got to turn it all. He said, go home. Go home. Go home. Tell, go home. Listen, go home and tell your family about it. I don't know, and I'm praying every day. We pray for Kelly. That's Roy Baker, Beverly's son, oldest son, believing that God's going to save him. There's not a greater joy, and although I told you I, I led my mother to Christ, uh, I, I'm just saying it's not a greater joy in all the world to be able to lead your family members to Christ. So the change was immediately, be on the outline, the change was intense. Verse 12, and immediately he arose and took up his bed, and they were all amazed and glorified God, saying we never saw it on this fashion. Amazed means it's translated uh, ecstatic. <laughs> they were ecstatic. Boy, When's the last time you've been to a church when someone got... Now, I'm not trying to get you to jump a pew and, and take up a snake or be crazy. But, I, I mean, when's the last time you've been where somebody walked down the aisle and, and we stood and said, hey, we got Joe Smith today and he's come and asked Christ to say... When's the last time we just broke out in clap? When's the last time we just said, praise God, hallelujah? When's the last time we gave God glory for saving somebody? It's all right. It's all right. God's looking for spiritual fruit. I don't know who said this, but I copied him. It says, God is looking for spiritual fruit, not religious nuts. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about you ain't got to be a nut about things, but we ought to bear spiritual fruit in our lives. I'll close with John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain and that, what's, and that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, you may get it. 
Oh, listen, listen, listen. Folks, there's enough of people in, not in church this morning in Fort Walton Beach and Mary Esther uh, around the city today on the Air Force bases. There's enough people to fill this church up 10 times on Sunday and still not get them all in. You don't have to go proselyte people out of other churches. Man, let's just go out here in the highways and hedges and compel people to come in. Amen? Amen. All right, stand with me for prayer. <clears throat> <clears throat> but John is going to come and lead us in a song of invitation. Look at, look up this way. I was talking to my daughter, and uh, Crystal is a, she's something else. I love you, darling. <clears throat> but if you don't want to know what she thinks, don't ask her. She said, Daddy, I, I talk about the outlines, and I got some of my family tell me I don't like the outlines. I, I like the outlines. My daughter says, I don't like them, Daddy. Because people start rattling those things when you start doing the invitation, making noise, and it, I think it distracts people. So do not rattle your bulletin in the next couple of minutes. <laughs> You'll get me in trouble with my family. Look at me, guys. God loves you today. God loves that lost mama, daddy you've got. There's not a person in all the world that God doesn't love. Young people, guys down that front row, good-looking young men right down here, God loves you. Christ died for you. He doesn't love just mom and daddy. He does love mom and daddy, per se, but he loves you. You're special to him. And don't ever forget that. Don't, don't ever forget. You said, I had two of the guys come up to me a couple weeks ago, and they said, Preacher, I was talking about getting the long pump fixed. I thought they were going to tell me they were going to fix the long pump. They come ask me a question. They said, Preacher, we got a friend of ours that lives in our neighborhood who's an atheist. And we want to witness to him. How do we do that? <laughs> Well, I talk to him, and I say, go see Johnny. But, uh, <laughs> but there, was t there was two young men concerned about someone going to hell. When's the last time you just, and if you're not physically able to, you can always sit on the pew, but when's the last time you just knelt at the altar and cried out someone's name to be saved? That's my invitation today. God, lay someone on my heart. God, lay someone on my heart. Let's bow our heads. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm going to pray. Johnny's going to sing very softly. Why don't you come this altar today? Why don't you care enough about someone to call their name out? Father, take these simple thoughts today and burn them in our hearts. God, help this preacher to be more concerned. God, help me quit being so busy doing things that really doesn't matter in eternity. Lord, let's get back to soul winning. Let's get back to seeing people saved for the glory of God. Lord, that's why you died for. So, God, I pray. I pray for that young man I've been praying for. God, he's not saved. God, let me win him to you, Father. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Why don't you slip out and come, Jordan? Come on. Come on. Come pray for your friend. I need you. Oh, I need you.
Some of you don't know, but this is Stephanie Miller's mom and dad, uh, two of the sweetest people on the face of her. And the uh, uh, reason on the face of her because Stephanie was the sweetest, but she was the Lord. And she's running the Hobby Lobby up there right now. But uh, uh, I uh, just love these folks. They came down for Lauren's graduation. And Lord, we're praying for you, baby doll. I know mama's looking over heaven, proud of you. Okay? Don't blow it, sister. Okay? <laughs> love you guys. Anything else? Anything else, Brother Johnny? Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Okay? Brother Paul, you dismiss us, please. Father, thank you for your blessing today. And Lord, my heart be in tune with you, Lord. And, yes. And be compassionate toward others, Lord. That, yes, Lord, Jesus. We see their needs. And, Lord, that you help fulfill that need, Lord, by showing them what you've done for us. Yes, John, John, yes. 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 Yes.